In this video we're going to look at DLNA access and particularly installation of the Media Tomb tool on Linux. So at the moment you can see I'm at my desktop so the first thing I'm going to do is to check whether I've got Media Tomb installed on Fedora. I can just switch across here and look for Media. As you can see here all I've got here is the Media Player and various other utilities so it isn't installed. Um, on things like Ubuntu, Mint as well, you can install Media Tomb directly from your software center. But unfortunately on Fedora it doesn't actually work very well because of the dependencies are wrong. So I'm going to drop down to the command line here and install it from the command line. So the easiest way to do this is to pop up the instructions on the linuxium.com. So again I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to pull up my browser window here. Click across on the server guide. Uh, click down on DLNA streaming okay and look at installation of media tomb here we go that's the uh, the GUI installation method so I'm going to scroll down here and look at the Fedora instructions so I'm just going to cut and paste these instructions from here so I'm going to select it control C from that window click back in this window and then I'm going to click OK, enter my password, Fedora will search its repositories, OK, there it is, Media Tomb, I'm going to say OK to install it, ah, there it's done, it's now installed. The next thing I need to do is to do slight change to the configuration file for Fedora. Um, so I'm going to click down here on configuring media tomb here and go down to here this is the file I need to edit just need to change one line empty interface not set to empty interface equal whatever we want in this case we're going to use localhost so I'm just going to put LO in here so first of all um, on your system if you want to check what interfaces you've already got configured then just type in the command if config so let's do that from here right. There we go, so we've got two interfaces here. One is our local host interface and the second is our ethernet interface. So I'm just gonna use the local host one, I'm quite happy with that. So all I need to do is edit this media tomb configuration file here. Control C and I'm just gonna do a sudo vi etc media tomb.conf again because it needs uh, root access, I need to put in my password. Okay, here we are in the file. Here's the line we need to change, empty interface not set. Okay, and I need to change it to my interface that I want to use, which is LO for localhost. So I'm just gonna go across here, use X to get rid of this, and then I to insert LO. I'm using Vi here, obviously, but you can use whichever editor you like. There we go. I've changed it now. Hopefully that file should now look good. If I was to uh, go in there and check it again, you can see that it's now been updated there. LO. Okay, let's quit out that one. So we've now changed the uh, configuration here. Now, the next thing I need to do is actually start the thing up. So Fedora runs uh, Media Tomb as a service, which does make sense. So I'm just going to pick up the service command from here. Again, I'm going to do a control C from this window and then a shift control V to paste it in. There you go. Seems to have started it. So the last thing I need to do is just take a look at this file again. And OK, this is the port that it's going to be running on 50500. You can change that to whatever you like as long as no other services are actually using it at the moment. I am just going to do shift Control c to pick that up. Okay, so what I need to do now is just to uh, create a new tab and type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost because that's the interface we're using and then that port name which was 50500 I believe. And there we go. There's the Media Tomb uh, welcome page, if you like. So 
what we now need to do is actually add some files into media to him. So as you can see we've got two basic entries here. We've got database itself, so this is what Media Tomb is actually holding in its database. Those are the files that it will actually serve up to the DLNA devices on your network. And over here on the second tab is the access to local Fedora file systems in this case. So I'm going to click on file system here. So what we need to do is choose the files from our locally connected um, storage for sharing. So I'm going to go down to my RAID drive here. I've got most of my stuff here and so for instance I want to share video. We've got three files here. I can just click on the plus sign to add them to my database and that basically means that they will be shared. I can just click them all down here or I can click on this icon and what that means is that anything added to this directory will be automatically scanned and picked up and added to the media tomb database uh, that's a really useful option to have because as soon as you put files into this directory on your hard drive then media tomb will immediately pick them up and serve them out to your dlna devices so if you click on this auto scan icon what you can do is you can say the uh, scan mode uh, which is normally timed uh, you can then say whether you want a basic or a full scan, um, whether you want a, re a recursive scan, so that means you're going to scan down into subdirectories or not, I'm going to leave that as blank, whether you want to include any hidden directories in that within that directory, I'm not that bothered, and you can also specify the interval that media tomb scans that directory, so um, in this case it's every 1800 seconds. Okay. So, and you can change that obviously down to, if you want it to look every minute, you can actually change that all the way down to 60 or whatever. You don't really want it that low, I mean, unless you're really uh, moving videos in literally every minute, then that's fine. I'm just going to leave the interval as at the default 1800 and hit set. Okay, and that's done. So if you click back now on the database icon, what we should see is this directory that we've shared. And if we click this out, hopefully we can see we've got these two um, already shared, that it's picked up already. Those are available for serving out onto your DLNA devices. So that's Media Tomb all configured. Probably what you will need to do on your PC is to add the start command into your setup files. Um, again, the best way of doing that is to go and have a look at our quick hints and tips section. Under, I think, system administration, um, we have got running scripts at startup time. Okay, so what you can do is to put that command service media tomb start, just pop that into this file here, which is the etc. RC local. Okay, so once you've plugged your TV into your internet socket, then if you're using an LG TV like me, what you need to do is press a button called Menu. Okay, so now looking at TV screen, and then you need to scroll across until you get something called My Media. Then we press OK. And what you'll find is it asks you what you're looking for, whether you're looking for movies, photos, or music. So I'm going to look for movies. So... Okay, and it comes back with a list of the available movies that it's found on Media Tomb. You can see that it says up in the top corner at Media Tomb. You can then just come down and select the actual movie that you want. So here I'm going to go for Weird Al. I just confirm that choice. And here it picks up from the last point I actually had it. And obviously from here you can pause it. You can fast forward it, okay, you can stop it, and obviously you can either play it again or you can switch to a different film. So this is a really great way of being able to access the content on your PC from your TV, and that's what DLNA is all about. Thanks for listening.